Eu. Hello. Hey, Tony. How's it going? I'm good. I'm good. What about you? Good. Good. How was uh, holidays? Ah, good, good. It was sunny. <laughs> it was nice. <laughs> <laughs> I had four days of sun, so it was. <laughs> I could enjoy it. Dimitris was worried that you will not appear. <laughs> now he will need to present Say Dimitris. Oh. Ah, nice. We're all here. <laughs> yeah. Test, test. One, yeah, two, we can three. hear you. I no, no, it's all at all. Testing. Ah. I'm just testing the captions, auto captions. Oh, there is auto caption? Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, three captions. Oh, what is it? That good. Uh, yeah. Speaking language, it says English again. Okay, let's do that. Uh, okay. Does it work? Ah, it does work. Yeah. There is even a transcript. That's pretty cool. <laughs> and it says it's it's really nice that it says who who talk about and says everything. Where's the transcript though? So on the hide captions there is a narrow, and if you click on that, oh, it's beautiful. Oh. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I only see the live ones. But anyway, it's distracting anyway. I'll hide it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Natori, are you ready? I didn't prepare anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just here for support, you know, emotional support. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I just lied to you, yeah. It's all right. How is vacation? Ah, it was good. Up to, to today, it was all sunny today, so I went to the beach. It was yeah, nice. Really nice. You still have a day, don't say it was good. You still have one day. I uh, know, but today it's already not sunny anymore. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it was fun. But... And they say tomorrow it will rain, so it's gone. <laughs> yeah, we have rain here. Well, no, I mean in the project. Um, but but yeah. it's better today. <laughs> How many people are expected in this room? The agenda. Let's check the agenda. Okay, it's by date. So today. Oh. You're already below, I guess, in the updates. It's there. just us? Yeah, attendance. I don't see anybody else. <laughs> Some people jumping in the document. Anonymous. Maybe it's us. You can present to me and I can just approve it, right? PR style. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ricardo, hi. Hi, hi, Dimitris. Hi. And thanks for Hello. joining. 
Yeah. We're... <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. No, no, we we're afraid we would be alone. I was saying uh, Ettore could just present to me, although it would not take too long. <laughs> okay. We're in the same yeah. team, so. <laughs> yeah, let's give it another couple of minutes and see if more folks actually join. <clears throat> Ah, uh, trying to add myself to the uh, document. Ah, it was the ad I was missing. Okay. <laughs> nice. All right, I think uh, we can get started. Uh, well, thanks for joining. Uh, uh, today, uh, we have the Kairos project. Um, this meeting is being recorded, so if any other folks in the community can or would like to watch the meeting, they can do it afterwards. But yeah, so uh, go ahead and take it away. I'd like to hear about the Kairos project, the progress, the community, what it's about, what. Uh, uh, anything that you can share mm -hmm. sure just share my screen one second um a small set of slides okay i think you can see them right yep. all right yep. uh, so um what is kairos um kairos it's an immutable linux distribution um and what are, what is the, um, the problem that tries to um, What's the challenge? So, what tries to what the problem tries to solve? Um, first of all, it's the, um, the complexity of um, boost a uh, large scale Kubernetes um, cluster at the edge. Um, the complexity of installation in general of Kubernetes to to bare metal or on prem devices uh, that spans across um, data centers, um, or everything which um, is very tied to the metal, so to the, um, the real boxes and not to the cloud. However, um, Keros doesn't um, put a very constraint, hard constraint on that, so you can actually deploy um, Keros on the cloud as well. And I'm going to touch uh, on that point uh, later on too. Um, but yeah, uh, what I want to underline, it's not optimized for the cloud, so images are a little bit bigger, uh, so you can expect more um, hardware support on top of that. Um, so the challenge also includes managing upgrades, so how you um, upgrade the machines, then the physical machines, and um, the flex so, um, when we talk about flexibility, um, we talk about customization, uh, so what kind of um, software I can deploy on those machines, and also, for instance, what kind of drivers I would need um, if there, there is need some, for some specific drivers. Um, and also one important point, it's vendor neutral. So it doesn't um, tie or uh, there is no vendor lock-in on any specific OS. Um, and it tries to strives to be um, um, very generic approach, uh, try to um, fit in the same umbrella all the, all the OSs. Um, some of the questions that uh, people have when deploying Kubernetes the Edge can be, what OS uh, do I install on that? How I'm going to upgrade it later? Um, what are the date zero operation to, um, to actually managing uh, the life cycle of the um, of the um, cluster um, afterward? And basically, it tries to fill the gap and try 
to um, put the user um, the only the only um, question that the user uh, sorry the only point that the user want to um, to actually care about is how um, how I can run Kubernetes. So it, the user doesn't want to um, to have issues with this itself. So uh, it tries to um, bridge that gap and make that as easy as possible. Um, so what is an immutable meta distribution? Um, it is meta because it's vendor neutral. So it doesn't tie to any uh, specific uh, Linux distribution. Uh, so you will see Keros uh, on Fedora, on Ubuntu, or on Alpine. Uh, it is focused to run Kubernetes. However, um, Keros comes with different images, uh, which uh, includes the Kubernetes, a Kubernetes distribution or might not include a Kubernetes distribution. So uh, it's left for um, second hand of customization on which uh, Kubernetes distribution you want to um, apply on it. So uh, for instance, if you pick the standard images of Keros, they came with um, the K3S support, um, but it's uh, highly customizable. So uh, we are going to see that later. Um, it is container based. Uh, so any um, of those images are actual um, container images that you can run with uh, Docker, Popman, or um, generally speaking, any container engine of your choice. And it is cloud init driven, so it is very focused on um, on a simplistic, um, very simply stick approach, which is um, cloud init first, and every configuration is driven by cloud init. Um, so um, we are going to touch some points. Uh, the first of all, it's um, distribution agnostic. So uh, any distribution have a specific know-how and uh, licensing um, uh, pack, I would say. So there are very different uh, Linux distribution, such as Alpine, Ubuntu, or Debian, and each one of those have their own uh, set of packages, set of licensing, uh, licensing. Um, and also, um, there are cases where somebody wants to actually deploy Kubernetes on such called golden images. So um, there are teams that maybe are tied to a specific uh, Linux distribution and they want to deploy that and on top of Kubernetes. And Keros tries to, to simplify that by providing a common framework that works for all the OSs. So a uh, very high level overview on how does it work. Um, we have a, what we call Keros Factory. So the Keros Factory takes a um, Linux container image of your choice, like uh, OpenSUSE, Fedora, or Ubuntu. And what we do, we just apply a framework image on top. The framework image contains um, what we call the Keros Core Framework. The framework is a set of binaries um, and configuration that makes um, behave the same. Um, and with that, I mean, um, makes, for, for instance, the OS immutable. Um, it contains an agent that will take care of the upgrades. Um, and then, of course, um, a kernel and an init RD, which are coming from the Linux container image, um, but we configured them. So, um, so to say, um, Keros Core for um, OpenSUSE supports systemd. So we have specific configuration uh, with Dracut uh, to achieve that. And so that, what it means, practically speaking, is during the during, uh, when, we, when we apply the framework, uh, we rebuild the init RT. And it's not forking uh, Linux distribution. So we just use upstream images as they are. Uh, we just install some packages. And then we um, push them in our CI. Of course, the whole process can be produced as well um, by uh, any user. We run automated tests on top of it. So um, what we do is uh, we use the Keros factory and the artifacts, um, which are um, produced by it are, pass, are, are, are have different stages of testing. And you can see that all um, directly in GitHub because uh, all of the, uh, those tests are run by GitHub action. So um, every commit on master is tested, every PR is tested, uh, and you can always track the status of the, um, of the project in the releases. Um, so this is more or less an overview of the Kairos factory. Um, so um, have two um, interfaces. One is the CLI, and the second one it's a Kubernetes um, native extension. So there is a CRD uh, which um, helps you build highly customized images. Uh, so you can actually uh, take an upstream image, uh, like like we said, OpenSUSE, Ubuntu, or Fedora, uh, directly inside your Kubernetes cluster if you already have one, and that can uh, create 
again, another Kairos-based image, uh, which can be used to upgrade um, a Kubernetes cluster. Um, so we use the factory to build official Kairos images that are then released in the Kairos CI repositories for users to download. So um, we also build the framework images, uh, which contains all the binaries and configuration files for each version released. So a user can um, carefully uh, reproduce a Kairos version um, against um, an upstream container image. Um, and this allows and free everybody to actually build from scratch um, a Kairos um, variant. And this is why we call it a meta Linux distribution, because um, we release um, a set of um, images already built by us, but you are completely free to rebuild it from um, from a user perspective, either on Kubernetes or on just on your laptop, because this is, uh, as I said, there is a CLI for that. And on top of that, the factory will take care also the, of the installation. So we have um, a tool um, that allows you to, um, to do the network booting, for instance. Uh, for, for configuration installation, um, when a Keros, um, a Keros system boots, um, there are various ways on how you can interact with it and uh, handle the installation. Uh, you can do manual uh, installation with the SSH. Uh, you can run it locally. Uh, so if you are booting, um, there is also an interactive installer. Um, there is a web UI. So if you have access to the local um, network of the box, you can just point to uh, the URL and um, your cloud config, which is the installation configuration file. And there is also a QR code uh, installation. So um, the first boot actually shows you up um, a QR code that you can screenshot it and use this um, Keros CLI um, to register the box. To, um, and in this case, it will start the installation with the cloud config you specified. So um, there are various ways on how you can uh, install um, a Keros machine. And about fully automated deployments, uh, we have um, a tool called Aurora Boot, which takes uh, a container image that, uh, that is the result of the Keros factory. So it is um, upstream container image plus the Keros framework. And then it can be um, used to, for instance, run a netbook deployment automatically. So you don't have actually to care to set up um, the network uh, because Aurora Boot will take care of that by itself. And it will also allow to remaster the container image to an ISO. So you can embed, for instance, additional packages, additional configuration, um, or just customization. So you can have your own ISO, which is pre-configured to, um, for instance, create a Kubernetes cluster. Um, and we have also peer-to-peer uh, -peer, uh, optional configuration that allows you to automatically bootstrap a K3S Kubernetes uh, this, um, deployment. So you can create, for instance, golden images uh, with ISOs, or not even golden images, but you, you can just netbook a container image, and it will automatically coordinate to form a Kubernetes K3S cluster. On the immutability aspect instead, um, um, Keros is going to, um, to have a very um, opinionated uh, configuration on that. So, the OS, uh, it's going to be split in two uh, partitions by itself, one uh, for the state, which contains the active and passive image, and one for the recovery. So the system by itself um, follows an AB um, upgrade schema. So instead of having a rootfs, which is uh, traditionally um, mutable, uh, it's going to be read only during boot. And when you are doing an upgrade, actually you are switching between um, you are switching a new image uh, with the active one, and the old active one becomes the passive. Uh, all the user data instead it's um, in a different partition, uh, which we call the persistent partition. And there is also um, a specific partition called OEM for the configuration. So you can actually have um, multiple configuration file um, always defined as as cloud config. So um, we uh, we we are strict on that, so we just use um, cloud config as a mechanism to handle the configuration of the box. But you can have multiple, mo more than one of them, and user data can be TP TPM encrypted. 
So all um, the data which um, is from for the user can be uh, directly encrypted with the TPM chip if there is one in the machine. On the AB upgrades, uh, it can be driven the upgrades via Kubernetes or also manually. So if the, um, the machines are forming a Kubernetes cluster, then you can use the Kubernetes distribution uh, actually to run the upgrades on the machine. And what it happens is, like I explained uh, briefly before, uh, it's an AB, mm, AB um, transition upgrade. That means that uh, a new transition image is created from the one that you're targeting uh, for upgrading your cluster to. And that transition image is going to be uh, your new active, and the whole active become the passive. In the recovery partition, um, it doesn't move. So the recovery partition stays on the same version, and you have to, um, to upgrade the recovery partition, you have to run a specific um, operation to upgrade that. So the recovery, it's like, say, the, the state which is well known to work and which you want to maybe roll back if something goes terribly wrong. And how um, it is customizable, how you can customize the image, that's very easy because you, if you are planning to, for instance, the image that we uh, push through our CI, you just need to create a new Docker file and uh, image, the image that we, uh, we push in our registries, like in this example here. So you just do from uh, the image that was pushed, and then you do run uh, whatever command you want. You tweak the version of the OS, which is um, so from uh, the OS to this file, which is the mechanism that um, it's used to, to version the, the OS. Or you can just print your own image. So you don't need to use the images that we are pushing our uh, CI, but you can actually build your own um, version of Kairos image. So you can take, for instance, open SUSE um, I don't know, 15.4, uh, apply the Kairos framework version 2.3, and you have uh, your open SUSE uh, Kairos 2.3. At that point, you can run other commands on top. And those are actually going to hit um, your host later. Uh, it's not that um, those commands are run into the host, um, into the um, target system that for the upgrade, but rather um, the, um, what you do is continuously rebuilding new images and then pushing to a container registry and point your cluster to that image later on. And as a higher level um, of protection, uh, there are two ways to handle user data encryption. Uh, one is offline and one online. So there is a Kairos KMS, a Kairos, uh, it's a K-management service, um, which you can deploy in Kubernetes. So there is a Helm chart um, that you can deploy on an already existing Kubernetes cluster. And that's going to um, act as a server where your keys are stored. But um, it's not really working like that. Uh, sorry for this oversimplification. But what will happen, it's going to store encrypted blobs uh, that only the clients can decrypt via the TPM challenging. So uh, TPM uh, is used here in two ways, one for challenging and one for um, generating encrypted blobs, which are then stored through the K management server. So this is when uh, we have an online scenario. So the machine can talk to um, something outside, which can be also your uh, local network or a remote network, doesn't really matter. And the offline scenario is it's going to use fully the TPM chip to store um, the keys. In that case, then um, you have um, the guarantee that uh, for a disk to another machine, then it cannot decrypt the, the user um, data. And this is actually working for every um, OS that we talked about later on, um, earlier on. So uh, which can be OpenSUSE, Ubuntu, or Alpine, they all have this um, support. And this is more or less um, all about it. So you can learn more about Keros in Keros, um, Keros .io. You can check out the code at Keros, um, Keros, um, AO, uh, Keros. We have the, the organization, which um, it's an umbrella organization for all the, the software that we talk in this presentation. We have a matrix channel. Uh, we are also on Slack and we, are, we have office hours. Uh, weekly, and we have also monthly meetings uh, where we collect feedback, um, not only from the community, but we share also the um, releases announcements, and we share um, what's coming next. 
That's it. Any questions? Uh, yeah, thanks for the presentation. That was very extensive. Uh, one question that I have uh, about some of the other special purpose operating systems, uh, uh, how would you describe uh, KRS uh, uh, compared to like flight car mm -hmm. or um, some of the bottle rocket or some of the other special purpose operating systems? That's, that's a very good question. First of all, Keros, it's not an OS. So while Flatcar um, have a dependency, a strict dependency on, uh, on a specific OS, Keros doesn't have. So, um, so to say, if you want an Ubuntu-based uh, cluster on um, which runs Kubernetes, you can start, uh, still um, use Keros to handle upgrades um, in a uh, AB um, partitioning um, way. So the design of Keros is to allow any OS to be mutable uh, in principle. So whether you use Alpine, whether you use Fedora or Red Hat or um, any OS, it can run at that point Kubernetes in an immutable fashion, plus you can upgrade uh, with an AB uh, logic. So difference with Flatcar or Talos Linux or um, any other um, project that I've seen, it's that they are bound to um, a specific OS, even Flatcar, right? So they are specific OSs uh, with the, the purpose of being immutable or purpose to be uh, focused on Kubernetes. While Chaos' uh, purpose is to be distro agnostic first, and it allows the same logic, so immutability, um, AB upgrades and focusing on Kubernetes um, to go um, and be uh, spanned to any any um, any OS. So let's say that a team um, is using headed. Uh, let's say in in typical um, um, enterprise scenario, um, for instance, there are situation where you are you have a Red Hat subscription and you would like to have the the cluster um, using Red Hat. Right, as a base OS. In that case, Keros helps because you can just use Red Hat with your subscription and it doesn't really matter for Keros because the upgrade is going to be all the same way for all the OS. So it doesn't really matter if it's Red Hat, Ubuntu, Alpine. The, the upgrade will look always the same uh, for the user. So to say, it, it will change a little bit the paradigm of upgrading um, because you, you will see the OS like an app instead of... Um, a real OS because it's a container. So at the end of the day, you can Docker run it. So let's say you push um, your Red Hat Kairos image to a container registry, then you can Docker run it later to uh, to inspect it uh, locally. And then you can push that image somewhere and you can upgrade your cluster um, to point to that image. So the approach is very different because it gives you a lot of freedom. Um, at the end of the day, the, the Keros OS is defined by a Docker file. So everybody is very um, um, acquainted to, to, to Docker files, and it's very common. Um, and in that way, you're completely untied to any vendor. So it doesn't really matter if um, it's either canonical. Maybe we should point out also image, that. Or yeah. Process. So, yeah, maybe the, the side effect that um, is maybe not completely obvious is that you don't wait for the Kairos maintainers to provide fixes mm -hmm. and security fixes and such because you already have a trusted distro. You may have um, a partnership with a, another company that provides you upgrades, security upgrades in time. So you don't rely on the Kairos team to provide those. Someone else maintains your OS. Kairos is just sugar on top that converts your OS to an immutable uh kubernetes distro right yeah, yeah that makes sense uh, yeah it's uh the answer so well one question uh that's specific to some of the special purpose operating systems like like flat car can you use uh K uh Keros, uh with flat car or with mm -hmm. uh or bottle rocket or, or any of the other so it, it's, it's more like an add-on i guess uh so you could use it as a base distro, flat car, or, um, but I guess yeah. it will have to be in a container, right? Yeah, exactly. So the only um, 
the only prerequisite is it has to be in a container. And then, yes, it's like sugar on top. So you could use, technically speaking, you could use bottle, uh, bottle rocket or flatcar as a base OS. And then you will uh, use the same mechanism for upgrading them, right? So it, at that point, you have a uniform um, and standardized way to, to upgrade the images across your cluster. Got it, got it. So um, here, um, um, with the Keras standard, for example, like you, you can, is, is this like a, you, uh, Kubernetes or some other type of applications that you provide some some tooling to install uh, those apps. For example, like the Kubelet or or installing like a Kubernetes distribution on top of uh, Keras. Mm -hmm. or... Yes, that's a very good question. So we have uh, what we call it providers, um, and this is a, like an interface that we have with the agent, with the Keras agent, with um, the Kubernetes distribution of your choice. So Keras by itself um, picks uh, K3S as default uh, way to deploy um, Kubernetes. So we, we pre-build pre um, K3S images. However, there are also other providers like Kubeadmin or MicroKates uh, or RT2. And that allows you, for instance, to um, um, other um, Kubernetes distribution. So you can say, OK, I have um, water rocket based plus uh, K3S or bot the rocket with cube admin or bot the rocket with macro case. And those are actually just binaries that fulfill um, a contract with the agent. Uh, and that it's just a contract for configuring the Kubernetes distribution, not anymore. Um, the dependency by itself, like kubelet binary and this kind of things, have to come in from the, from the upstream um, OS. Or of course, you can also bring your own binaries because at the end of the day, we, we build the Keros core, what we call the Keros core images that doesn't have any specific Kubernetes distro. So they, they act like um, plug and play, like a base building block. And so you have the Keros core, then you can pick um, your provider for the Kubernetes distribution and you can just install them in the Docker file. So you can create a new Docker file uh, referencing a Keros core image or build your own Keras core image based on the OS you like, and then apply on top of the Kubernetes distribution. So it's um, really just about having a Docker file. I can also show um, an example of the um, uh, Docker file, which we build. So if we go into the, is in the Kairos repo, and I go for, I don't know, Alma Linux or Debian or Fedora, you will see the base image, it's Fedora, for instance. We have some dependencies that we need uh, for the image in order to boot and so on and so forth. And then this is, that's all that comes from the stream of Fedora. Then we just apply the, the binaries from Keros, which are the agent, for instance, which uh, fulfill the contracts. So the agent by itself um, knows and have all the bits necessary to handle upgrades, for instance, the, of the machine the installation of the machine or the reset of the machine, because the chaos also supports uh, what we call reset. It is a way to, to just um, put the machine in the same state after installation, where you can actually um, reconfigure the machine from scratch while keeping the persistent data also. So uh, all of that is like um, completely docker file based. And when it's about customization, I think we have an example here. So yeah, yeah, yes, this is an example, for instance, to build a Fedora FIPS image uh, enable. So it can base it from, for instance, Fedora 2036, um, and then um, use the, um, the framework image. I think it's down there. Yeah, so we have the uh, framework images, which is just copied to the root face of the image. So at the end of the day, building a Keros OS, it's just about um, building a standard container image. The only difference that you will see is in those images, there will be a kernel, right? So, um, so the, the important aspect of this is the container image will also bring the kernel uh, and it's one single um, file. So the whole image is treated as a single file. When we are doing the AB upgrades, the whole image is um, it's basically converted to a raw file that we, we are going to swap um, the, um, the RB process. 
uh, let me just um, explain uh, happily. I don't know if that answered your question. Yeah, it makes that makes sense. Yeah, uh, yeah. Thank you for the answer. So, uh, another question that I have is: uh, Do you um, have like some sort of like fleet management for some uh, several Keros nodes? Like, if you are a user and you have hundreds of Keros nodes, um, mm -hmm. uh, is is there any tooling? Um, to help out with that, or this is something that is up to the end user to to uh, okay. implement. That's that's awesome question. So um, on um, configuration application, you can use virtually everything, right? It's when you have a Kubernetes cluster, you can use tools like Flux CD or Fleet to handle the, the cluster by itself. When it comes to the lifecycle management, so which, uh, upgrades or, or reset of nodes. Uh, we rely on system upgrade controller um, currently, uh, but we have in plan in the roadmap to build our own operator uh, to handle the life cycle. So at the moment, there is already a project we leverage. Uh, I know if you know it, system upgrade controller is one. And this one, um, it's going. you have to basically deploy this uh, software on your cluster, um, on your Kairos cluster. And this is going then to apply, for instance, a plan to handle upgrades of the nodes or the reset of the nodes or pushing new configuration to the nodes. So at the moment, we have this uh, layer of tooling, uh, right? But we, we are planning to enhance it with uh, our own operator. Awesome, great, great. Yeah, I think that's all the questions that I have. Uh, I think you're applying for sandbox on the CNCF. Uh, mm -hmm. There was a meeting uh, on Tuesday uh, to review the projects, but this presentation had not happened yet. So I think uh, the project will be uh, reviewed or evaluated in the next meeting. Uh, and I think it's I think it's uh, it's okay to, or it's it's good to me in terms of like. Uh, uh, going for the sandbox, um, but then that's actually evaluated in the in the sandbox review meeting with all the TOC members, uh, and then they decide uh, whether to uh, cast a vote uh, to include the project in the CNCF. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Awesome. Yep. All right. Thank you all. Thanks, Eduardo. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Feel free to reach out on Thank Slack you. if you have Thank any you questions. Carlo. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out on Slack, and we're always available. So, thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Ricardo. Right. See you. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Bye. Bye.